Thank you, everyone, for downloading this episode of the Nerdball Podcast. We're now in December, a few weeks away from Christmas. What better way to celebrate with this, than with this episode? We talk with uh, Mitch of the Toledo Lamp Company, uh, co-owner of the Toledo Lamp Company, and they offer they have a shop with all their beautiful lamps. You can check out the Instagram page and the website in the show notes. They also have a bunch of other artists in there. So if you're looking for some last minute gifts, check that out, check the website out and check their store out. I believe it's in Sylvania. Um, he was a great guest. Thanks to all of you for always downloading, liking, sharing, reviewing the podcast. Um, it is fun. I got back and making TikToks. So I am a week ahead. So hopefully <laughs> you're hearing this, I'm still doing that. Uh, but I was able to, you know, get back into that. It's just fun. And I like seeing the numbers, you know, say how many views and that kind of stuff. I also made some reels and made YouTube shorts. So uh, check those out. Check the YouTube page out. Search the Nerdball Podcast on YouTube. Like, uh, like and subscribe to that. Get those numbers up. If we get to 150 by the end of the year, that'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, this podcast is for you. So like it all, please download it. I, I've said, even if you don't listen to I tell some of my best friends they don't listen to my podcast, which is fine. They don't have to. At least download it. Like, give me give me one of those numbers. So uh, do whatever you can, whatever you want to do with this podcast, help it out. So uh, thanks again uh, to all of you. And uh, here is my guest. I'm Mitch Antusky, and this is the Nerdball Podcast. is the Nerdball Podcast with Lorenzo Melcher. Hey, Mitch. Uh, thank you for joining me on the podcast today. Well, thanks for having me. Um, I uh, I thought it was funny when I messaged you on Instagram and you know asked if you wanted to come on the podcast. And you're like, yeah, we thought you'd never ask. And, and <laughs> I was like, you know what? They, they have been... The little lamp company has been liking posts and, and things on my, on my pages. So uh, it just made sense to me. Because, I you know, you guys are liking my stuff. So I, so I would reach out, you know, and, and have you guys come on. So my master plan as subtle as it was. worked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It worked brilliantly. Cause here you are, Mitch. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Um, I, uh, I, I always ask the same question to all my guests. And, uh, so I'll start that with you. Uh, the question I always ask people is what have you been nerding out about lately? Something you're into uh, a hobby, something that you use to get away from like the daily grind of things, you know, reading, cooking, uh, riding a bike, uh, whatever, building Legos. I don't know, something that you'd like to uh, to do just to like say, hey, I'm going to turn everything off right now and I'm going to focus on this thing. Ooh, boy, that's a challenge. Yeah. Um, and I did a little homework last night and I I listened to a couple podcasts of yours. Um, so I know you're also supposed to add in there, but not about work. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and, <laughs> which, and which is better. hard, which is hard if you're a co-owner of a business, right? Yeah. And that was a challenge. And I slept on this and it's like, you know, for the last three years, our, our life has just been about the business mm -hmm. um, and everything revolves around the business. And so that is a challenge. And even when I find, um, so I was thinking about what was I, what have I really been doing lately? Um, and it's, it's somewhat business related, but I, I find it fascinating. Um, I'm following different types of uh, marketing gurus, as they say. Um, and I, I find their content uh, interesting. Uh, and I'm taking a class this next week because oh. um, I'm just always trying to always trying to <laughs> promote this business, you know. And so but I, I find the the aspects uh, of the, the marketing and it, I, I do a lot of it here uh, all encompassing you know from the photographs of the products and the marketing strategy and keeping up with social media and of course not having a budget to do major <laughs> advertising yeah, of yeah. course so it, the focus is always like how can you do this as cheap as you can mm -hmm. um and so that's what I, I i've been finding that interesting and then i like to try to apply bits of that and then I, you know, get a little satisfaction when you, when you get a like or a follow and mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, that, that, that is working. So that, that that's, that's a lot. of what, Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the hard part for me too, is like, I know I should be marketing this podcast like more and better, but there's like, for me, this, 
this isn't my job. So this is just the side thing I do. I, I work full time. I got two kids. I coach sports. Like, so this, this, uh, if I get two episodes out a week, like I feel good about myself. And last week, you know, last week I made some TikToks of the latest, my 200th episode that came out on Thanksgiving. So, you know, I was trying to get back into doing that. Uh, but it is a difficult thing. Do, do you find when you, when you are like watching all these, all this content and everything that I would imagine there's people say, Hey, you should do this. And then the very next one is like, here's things you shouldn't do. And it's that thing. Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like I just, I, I just made a quick Instagram story before I jump on here. And the first thing I said is I'm jumping on here really fast. And you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> oh, nobody cares about that, but yeah, it is a challenge and you hear different things and I'm following and, um, this, this new account that I'm following, well, actually, I've been following them for a while, but this is the class I'm taking. She, her new thing is category of one. And I'm really impressed with that because what we do here is is very unique. Um, and it's structured in, in a way like, in, like there, I just, I've never encountered anything else like this. So when you say you're going on to uh, uh you're filling out a, a form of some kind and wants to know what type of business you have you know what category do you fall into and i get stumped because i'm like well we're this we're retail but yet we're art mm -hmm. and you know we we collaborate and we are lighting so we have all these different categories and it's really hard to say you know, which one it is. And people say, want to know, well, what is your, your, you know, your niche audience? I'm like, well, that's a good one too, because we're all over the place. So her new philosophy of this starting this um, category of one thing just really appeals to me because I, I like to think that's kind of what we do here. We are a category of one and that's what makes us unique. And, you know, and I, I like to think worth seeking out. <laughs> Yeah, but even, well, last night my wife asked. She always asked who I'm podcasting with, and I said that uh, it's a little lamp company. And she goes, uh, "What? What is that?" Or like, do they they just sell lamps? I go, I go, yeah, I was on their Instagram page. I go, it's not like here's here's this lamp. It's but it's like art because you're right. It is. They're beautiful and they're unique and they're cool. And even coming up with the names for them is intriguing to me because I I like writing. You know, I I do I I dabble in stand up comedy, so I like to write and I like I coach football and I write speeches sometimes and I like that kind of stuff so even the the title of these lamps that you make is really cool too but but it, it would be hard to me your business it would be hard to say like here's the one the one thing yeah like I said we're, we're called the two little lamp company when we moved here to Sylvania we added home and gifts to to the title because mm -hmm. we've expanded and we're working like I said with nearly 30 different artists now uh who make oh the list goes on, so bear with me for a minute while no, I you're say. Good. You're good. <laughs> um, um, uh, ceramics and hot sauces and Christmas ornaments and freeze dried treats and candles and art pieces, handcrafted pens, uh, wooden projects. Wow. We have film Toledo in here. We have local authors. Um, trying to look around, what I say. we have ceramic people and. Uh, people who make things out of found objects. I'm, I'm looking to see what else there is. Um, <laughs> glass. We have blown glass. We have stained glass pieces. So out of those 30 artists, almost every one of them does something different. And so um, where were we going with that sentence? <laughs> Just trying to to say, like, here's, the, here's our one niche thing. Oh, yeah. So we're Toledo Lamp Company. And a lot of people uh, walk in and they... Uh, they're looking for a lampshade <laughs> or to fix the lampshade or clean a lampshade. And that is just not what we do. We, we kind of jokingly say we're not grandma's lamp store. Yeah. You can't come in here and you can't find a, a brass lamp uh, per se, or a ceramic lamp with a chicken on the front of it. Um, and so, uh, we're in a high heel. Right. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we do that. Um, so, uh, and we, and people want us to repair lamps. And so it's like, well, mm, maybe you, Maybe the Tillow Lamp Company is not the best name for us anymore. When we bought the business three years ago, it was called the Toledo Lamp Company. Um, it had been founded in about 2015. And uh, we had visited the uh, backstory here a little bit. Back, we had visited uh, the store, uh, downtown Toledo. And, uh, you know, we, like, we live in a loft. So we like the industrial look. 
and uh, the big exposed bulbs and all that kind of stuff goes with it. And we were like, one, one day I went down, I needed a, a lamp for the house, very specific need, had to be just the right size, shape, mounting and all this kind of stuff. And um, I thought, well, they they can make it. So I went down there, talked to the owner. Uh, we designed the lamp and she said, well, you know, you did you did a pretty good job with that. That's a cool lamp. Uh, we're thinking about selling the place. You should buy it. <laughs> And then, Man, as, they say, as they say, the rest is history. Then, yeah, yeah. So, so just, just because you needed some very specific, and I didn't realize. I guess, I guess I should have realized. But you can, you can. Is that something people can do? Just go in there, and be like, I have this idea for a lamp. Oh yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, yep. Uh, I always we consider the uh, the pipes and the fittings. Uh, I always call them adult tinker toys. Sure, because they are just out of X amount of shapes and sizes, you can put them together into countless variations. And and that's one of the things that I, I, I love to do is I sit back there in my little shop and just keep putting things together mm. and you find a shape or something that you like. And then if you build this lamp, you might like, you know what, next time I'm going to do this part, but then I want to do that over here or something. Okay. Could we add this or whatever? So the creativity is just, endless of what you can really do with these you know so-called tinker toys and we do custom we do custom work a lot of times people we take uh, some of the lamps that we already have and i always tell people if you like this basic lamp uh but you uh, you're taller or oh, okay. you have a you have a, a a bigger space that needs to be filled, we could just make it bigger hmm. you know um we have a floor lamp that's very popular and we took one home and Put it in our in our loft with has 16 foot ceilings and it looked you know minuscule <laughs> so we just it, it just enlarged the whole thing and now it's perfect scale and we've actually sold a couple of them to the people on our same floor uh, that had the same problem with the ceiling height so now, everything is it's completely customizable usually yeah how do you work you mentioned all those people that are also you know all those artists and stuff is it difficult to work with so many different people and try because they all have their own idea for like here's my thing or here's how it should sell or or are you more more just a shelf space for them at at at, at this point? Um, you know, I I've tried to curate things or uh, jury things. I'm sorry, uh, a a little bit more here, um, but yet at this point, I find that really hard to do because just because I am not a fan of this piece or this style mm -hmm. uh it, it doesn't mean that the next person that walks in off the street isn't going to look at that and go that's just what i've been looking for and i love that that speaks to me you know yeah so we have a wide variety of uh skill levels here there's a, there's some pieces that i'm like okay hmm, yeah like i said i don't know if i want that but then that's what sells and other pieces I absolutely love, and they hang here and get dusty. I'm like, well, what's wrong with people? Why don't they <laughs> want this? Do you know, if somebody doesn't buy it, I'm taking it home. Yeah. So, and it's, like I said, 30 different people, 30 different personalities. Sometimes that can be, that, that, that can be challenging. Yeah. It's, yeah, very challenging, especially being, being, you know, the, the owner, co owner of this business and something is on your shelf. It, it was, it was good to hear that you're like, well, I don't, I don't just pick stuff that I like because that would be hard to do is like, well, if, well, if it's going to be here. I I want to be able to, I want to like it because people that come in here might have this, might have the same, you know, philosophies and, and yeah. takes as I do, but, but that, that, that'd be difficult to just be like, I don't like this thing, but it's going on, it's going over there. Yeah. And, you know, we try to stress to everybody that we, that they know that we are, you know, basically we do have consignment here. Mm -hmm. And so, these are from 30 different types of people. And, you know, you can obviously see that this guy makes this and this guy makes that. And this guy's really good. And this guy is learning or whatever. Mm -hmm. But people love, people are drawn to things and it's, they speak to them and they got to have them no matter what skill level uh, someone's at at the, at the time. Yeah. And at some point you're, it is going to be known that, Hey, Toledo lamp company, it's a, you know, not just, lamps there and, and you can find all kinds of stuff and like you said that you change you change the name or added that little bit on the end there where people can go in and find you know everyone everyone wants the um like one of a kind thing like i feel like people always strive for that or like 
not necessarily collecting all these one of a kinds, but like have this one thing that that's like, here's the focal point of my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, we really believe, um, unfortunately, uh, for me, you know, people don't need to buy a lamp every week, <laughs> every month, yeah. maybe a, a couple times a year, even is accepted. <laughs> we do have, a couple, we have, we have uh, several customers who have a dozen or more pieces. And I'm like, okay, you guys, you know, the, the, the same, one of the, one of the, one of the sayings on on some of the reels is, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem, you know. And uh, these people come in and they're like, I got to have that. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm out of outlets, but I got to have it anyway. I'm out of outlets. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, but, I, I, that, that's got to feel good, too, that, you know, for those specific people where you're like, man, at least for them, like, this is this is a hit. I know for my for my podcast, I have some some loyal listeners and it's not very many, but I know like if I don't put an episode out, there's going to be people that are like, Hey, what's up this week? Or why don't you have an episode out? So, yeah. Yeah. Makes, yeah. <laughs> so like, they don't need a lamp every day. Um, but that's why we wanted to expand. You know, if you, if you fall in love with one of the candle scents that we have here, you burn it, you're going to need another one in a, a couple of weeks or whatever, or you buy the hot sauce. And once you make a couple of dishes out of it, you need to come back and get some more. People are always buying gifts, yeah. you know, uh, either for them or gift for other people. And we have things from, you know, $5 to $500. So, you know, there's all kinds of price ranges of things that you can, that you can get for people. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, what's great too, is you go into a place thinking, you know, hey, I'm going to, I have a hundred bucks. I want to buy a cool lamp. And then like, Oh, for $5, I can also pick up this thing, especially around now around the holidays. Uh, yeah. how, how did, how did that arrangement or how did that, you know, decision to be like, Hey, we're going to, you know, I don't want to call you guys a consignment shop because I don't know if that's what it is. But but how do you have that part? How create those partnerships and why did you do that? Um, when we had our first studio uh, down downtown in the warehouse district, um, it was at the Art of Market Shops, and we we ran the the, the Art of Market Shops where we had we leased to uh, five other different artists, mm -hmm. and there was also a large gallery uh, space where we had at that time um, twenty five or more artists, also mostly hanging. 2d art and this came about during the pandemic when uh, people were sitting at home there were no shows there were no festivals uh, no way for artists to sell things okay and but they were still creating and it was stockpiling up in the basement the attic in the corner of the living room you know mm -hmm. so we opened a space where they could come in and they could hang and they could show and sell and so we developed a relationship with a lot of uh a lot of people there and then when we came here to this space, um, downtown, we only had about 500 square foot in our showroom. And when we came here and we have over 1800. Oh. So there was a lot more space. And we're like, let's get into let's, some of these people who make, you know, the, the 3D items and the products, the entrepreneurs in the area uh, that do things that we can have more space to to showcase those. Is it a com Was it a combination of people reaching out to you and you reached out to people? Uh, yeah, a little bit of both. Okay. The word, uh, a lot of people know other people. And so you mm -hmm. uh, you sign a contract with one person and then they're like, you know, my friend does these things. And I'm like, okay, well, give me their, get me their Instagram and I'll check them out and we'll <laughs> give them a call. And and there's still, we, we still have a few more people that we want to, uh, there's a couple of things out there that I, I'd love to see us get. And so we're still always working on. And some people come and go. Um, yeah. You know, they're like, okay, well, I, Either I'm not selling enough or I, I need this stuff for another thing or, you know, I tried it and I'm not making anything anymore. I'm not making product anymore. So mm -hmm. I, I, and so we try to get new people in too. Are you looking for any podcasts? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I liked your, that's why I was liking your stuff. Like, so I would love to do, I, I would love to do one. That's what kind of intrigued me um, when you asked, because I was like, oh, that's been on my list of things. In addition to, you know, <laughs> building a lamp and running a store and dealing with uh, with artists and trying to have a life outside mm -hmm. of here. Like the last thing I need to do is, yeah, let's do a podcast. I can't even keep up on my <laughs> on my own little, per, my own little personal uh, blog. You know, I can't do that. So. Well, you don't have to tell me. I'm, I coach high school football and now I'm coaching basketball. I work full time job. I got two kids. I do this. I actually yeah. have another podcast I do with my buddies called Three Different Dads. Where we, right. we, we do once a week. So like. So I, yeah, but I, I always tell people about podcasts because to me, they're so much fun. I, I love doing it. And, you know, my wife tolerates it because it takes an hour out of the day where I'm down in the basement, you know, but, uh, um, 
what, what I I'm always willing to to help people or do whatever, or I even tell people like, if you think you might want want to do a podcast, kind of think of what you would like to do and just come on this podcast and we can run it and go through it and, and talk about it. You know, I, I I love helping people do podcasts because I know I have so much fun doing it, and I always tell people mine are easy though because. I don't have any like homework to do beforehand. Right. I just talk to people, you know, it just depends on what you want to do. But I, you know, if there's ever a time where you're like, Hey, I have this idea. Let me know. All right. Yeah. I'll help put, you that, put that on my list. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> so you're, you, you, uh, you mentioned you moved to Sylvania to be to, to more space, have all these uh, other artists and different artists is, is, was art like something you've always been into? Uh, yes, I was probably always meant to be uh, an, an artist. I think my grandfather was an uh, inspiration for me. Um, he was rather unorthodox. He he would draw or paint on anything. Uh, and that he, he lived with us uh, until his passing when I was uh, 16 or so. And uh, it, it would irritate my mother, his daughter, uh, because he'd just paint on anything. He'd find a cardboard box, open it up, and then paint a beautiful picture on the inside of this cardboard box. And we're like, well, we can't frame that. Yeah. You know? At the time, you didn't frame. Now, today, probably, yes, you could take the cardboard box, you'd frame it, hang on the wall, and it would be cool. Um, but at the time, and then he would he'd do a really great sketch in a book. He always had a sketchbook with him. And, and then um, he drew this beautiful sketch, and then down in the corner, he would take some notes on something that he was <laughs> <laughs> He just screwed up this whole wonderful thing. So, so we have none of we have none of his art because it was all basically just like glorified doodles everywhere. So he inspired me, and I, I kind of always, uh, I guess, I had a you know a little bit of a knack for it. Um, I did not pursue that um, in my in my life at all. Um, you know, I fell into uh, cooking, and and ended up being a chef uh, most of my life, and. Uh, so that that is artistic, in yeah. a way. Yeah. And uh, you know that evolved into uh, cake decorating and everything else, which is very artistic. Um, and then um, that kind of all ended. And I, was, you know, that's a young man's job, and I was going to start again. Yeah, too old for all that. And uh, so it evolved into a couple other things, and then, and also, uh, I spent my entire life uh, in the world of uh, community theater, and mm. so the that world there uh you end up uh you go to help build the set one day and then it's like when i, I paint the set and i decorate the set and all this so i that was where i learned to and, and to to make something out of nothing because no theater ever has a budget yeah. for anything that i ever wanted so you would have to be creative and come up with you literally walk backstage and you're like okay i need you know we we, we need a a roast turkey to come out of this oven. Well, a paper bag, some masking tape, and some shoe pockets, and I'm going to have a I'm going to have us a, a roast turkey here in a minute. So, like MacGyver. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so, um, so that was where I developed. A, 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 I used a lot of my, um, you know, skills. I guess or skills. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Because um, um, I really enjoyed that, and uh, and that in is, is a process in itself. Um, to uh, advance your skills in that. And uh, so, you know, that was a, a lot of fun and a lot of work for, mm, you know, uh, age up here, but, you know, like 40, 40 years mm -hmm. I was doing all that. So. Well, yeah, that's so uh, I got a couple of things. So when you talked about your grandpa, um, you know, making his cardboard art and stuff, it, it reminded me my, so my grandfather was a carpenter and he built my, he built, the house that that they all lived in my dad grew up and you know at, he built furniture he built uh he would he would build little tiny birdhouses and mailboxes and things to sell and he have a little shop in his in his out of his garage and but the thing he did until someone told him you got to stop doing it he would write the prices on the thing with like a sharpie <laughs> and we're like you can't do that man i mean people would still buy it but uh probably his yeah. family but after a while like here's you know, my family down in Texas, here's some stickers, put these stickers on these things. And then people have you ever, yeah. Have you ever been to a store? Do you see the idea of the concept of a sticker? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was so funny. And maybe it didn't, I, you know, 
he didn't pay attention to it because people were still buying it. So he was like, well, what? I, no one's saying anything about it. But the, <laughs> I, I thought that was funny because that it just reminded me exactly of him. Because, but these things, you know, I got, I keep looking. Around. I don't think there's any in my basement right now, but I got them in my house. They're just, he built all kinds of stuff. And it was cool because it was art. And I, there was one time he never, I don't think he ever talked about it being art, but there was one time he took a block of wood, um, sanded all the corners. Everything was rounded. Um, and then put little tiny feet on it and, and it just sat on on the table and my dad it, it's at my dad's house now and my dad asked him like hey, what is this he's like he just goes it's art and but he's like he never said anything about his stuff being art before and it was just this block of wood on on four little feet and he's like it's art and my dad's like all right well i'm gonna take it <laughs> like a, some type of cosmic headless dog or something <laughs> i don't know but he yeah he just he he, it was, it art. yeah yeah and and like i said i think it's at my dad's house right now just sitting so people can can look at it and on the bottom it says 7.99 <laughs> oh that's good yeah uh but you mentioned you mentioned being a chef and in 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 uh cake decorating which cake decorating uh i love watching the cake decorating shows my wife is really good like if we have a family event like people will ask her to uh-huh. make cakes and, and, and stuff. And, but it, it's such a cool thing that for me is very difficult. Um, uh, but, but how, like, how'd you go, um, how, like, how'd you go from being a chef and then baking and like, like you, you're exactly like me, like, here's all these, I'm going to do all these things and keep going and do all this stuff. Uh, you know, a number of years ago when all of the big cake shows started hitting the cooking network and food network and things like that. Um, you know, they're, they're just fascinating. All the sculptured cakes and, and those those fascinated me. And building a sculpture out of out of cake or, mm-hmm. or Rice Krispie treats or fondant or whatever, it's it's just like art. It's it's sculpting the same way that you had clay or marble. It's just a, it, it's fondant and you can eat it if you choose to then. Um, and again, count the possibilities there, as we've proven through all these different cake shows and competitions and everything else, you're only limited by your imagination. And I say that every day here in the store, uh, you, you just, whatever you want to dream up. And, and I, I tell some people, if you, if you can't think of it, this crazy bald head probably will. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, can I tell you one thing when people use find it on those shows and I was very interested in wanting to know what it tastes like. And I don't like it. <laughs> It doesn't no, taste nobody very good. does. Yeah, nobody does. I mean, is it, it strictly for purpose. decorating? Pardon me. Is it strictly for decorating? Well, no, you can eat it, and there yeah. uh, there are some different recipes. Like I make one uh, made out of marshmallows. Okay. And um, it has a a much it has a better flavor, and it has a, a lighter consistency, mm. so it's not quite so pleathery uh, yeah. to eat. Um, and, and you know, am I still a fan of it? No, give me. Give me a big old glob of buttercream any day on anything, you know. But uh, so yeah, and unfortunately, in order to get that end result, you have to um, you have to pay the price and, and use something that's not quite as yummy as you'd like yeah. it to be. Is there is there you mentioned buttercream? Is there a particular kind of frosting or something you like? Is that it? Because I know there's uh, there's I, even my my wife and I are different. Like we like different frostings, and yeah. I'm already not a huge frosting person. Like I I will wipe off frosting if it's too much um what what planet are you from i i i i understand my daughter's the opposite like she'll she'll just eat all the frosting and not the, the cupcake or the cake right yeah I, I don't know i just i'm not a huge fan um my wife even had the idea of creating um markers to decorate cakes you know before they before they had them or before we, we uh-huh. knew about them because she knew i didn't like frosting so but she still wanted to like decorate stuff you know i just oh. i've never liked them i don't know okay yeah, <laughs> I won't hold that against you. I really won't. Um, I like just a regular, good, good old fashioned uh, uh, buttercream. Just yeah. nice. Very, uh, the more fat, the more sugar, the better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I also really enjoy slightly burnt cookies, like uh, especially uh, chocolate chip cookies that are a little burnt on the bottom. So much hmm. so that my my family knows, and if they make cookies, they set they they set aside some extra burnt ones for me yeah they all come out except for this other tray and we're gonna leave those in there for him. yeah <laughs> uh, two extra minutes all right yeah i have i don't know 
I, I feel like uh, I feel like that's not a thing people enjoy, but I enjoy it. I don't know. No, because I'm a soft and chewy. I'm a soft yeah, and my wife, and Yes, my wife is exactly the same way. She'd rather eat rock. Like, she would just eat cookie dough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, opposite of the tracks, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, so you... Uh, uh, after after you move on to cake decorating and you start doing all this, uh, being more involved in the artist art to me is is I love art. My uncle was super into it. He did he does all kinds of stuff and um, he was a photographer. That he would you know his photographs, uh, you know even of us as kids were like it was like really cool to me now, especially as an adult. Uh, I just feel like I don't have any any art thing that I enjoy or that I can do well. I don't know I don't know what. Um, but how, how do you, how do you like, because art is so expansive, how do you decide, like, here's the, here's the thing that I'm going to focus on? That, that is a challenge. Um, because again, I like a little bit, I've dabbled in all different types and, you know, you, you just have to kind of let your, your heart really tell you where you like doing something the most. Uh, you know, I am not, I like to paint, um, but I know I'm not very good. Mm -hmm. So I just don't do that if I don't have to, um, you know, I, I, and I've tried, I've tried to, uh, to sculpt things, which is weird because I said, I, I like to sculpt cake things, but I was never any good at, at clay or anything. So I do have a pot sitting on my desk at home that I made in, in high school that has managed to survive all this time, but it is pretty simple, but, and it's ugly, but it's still there and holds my pencils in my desk. So. <laughs> So yeah, you just have to kind of figure out what you really like to do. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's something that I think sometimes you're influenced by what other people um, like you to do too. Um, you know, if they're, if you're really drawn to it, um, I've gone through a phase and I haven't done it now for so long and it, it disturbs me. And I think about this all the time. Um, probably one of my favorite styles of art is surrealism. Mm -hmm. And I like to, um, I, I do these, they're basically ballpoint pen drawings, um, but I love to personalize them. Like it, if I got to know you and I would do a drawing for you, uh, you know, I would, uh, they're, they're very, are you familiar with Salvador Dali? Yes, I am. Greatest, yep. greatest yep. Uh, surrealist that there is. Okay, so they, they kind of have some of his feel to him a little bit, um, but I like to personalize things. You know, I would figure out a way how to get all your different sports in there somehow if it's just a ball or a whatever here you know and you've got the two kids i try to somehow incorporate um their 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 name or their initials i put initials inside of rock ledges and uh you know whatever else you like to do um sure. you know you'd have you'd have a microphone shoved somewhere you know <laughs> and, and so i like to do those because they're very you know, specific for the person. If I showed you one that I did for my friend Molly, you'd be like, oh, that's nice. But I don't understand why there's a cat. And, you know, why is this cat sitting, you know, inside of a pot or anything else, you know? So, but I, I like to do those and I haven't done it for a while. And one of those things where they just take time. Mm -hmm. By the time I'm done here with, you know, my, you know, 12 hour days here sometimes, um, and then go home and try to get dinner ready and everything else. The last thing I'm going to do is sit and, and draw. I mean, it is what I want to do, but you know, I'm sucked into the green. Yeah. There is only so much time in, in the day, man. I, I get that. Like that's, I mean, that, that was one reason I did stand up comedy for a while and then I hadn't picked it up for about five years just because it's on the lower list. I don't feel like going to an open mic in Michigan until and getting home at one o'clock and then having to wake up at five 15 and go to work, you know? So like, there's things that drop off that you, you know, for me that I really like to do, but Hey, there's other priorities right now. And you know, there's, <clears throat> there's, you, you try to think like, there's always more time later, you know, but, but maybe not like you, you, you yeah. try to fit all these things in because you just want to be the best person you can be or the happiest or whatever. And then, and sometimes not all that stuff makes sense at the time. And that's yeah. what I'm at, after 40 years of, of doing theater, almost one show, literally almost one show after another, after another, mm -hmm. you know, three to six or 10 a year. Um, you know, when we started the business, 
there was just like there's just no time because you rehearse at the you rehearse in the evenings and you uh have to do shows on the weekends when we're open we we did a show uh year a year and a half ago now and we just really wanted to do it one of my favorite shows and so um i had the opportunity to do it and um but it was you know it was a bit of a challenge to try to squeeze that squeeze that in yeah um but you know we did it and then it was like okay done and over with now so for a while again <laughs> until, until like i said the business gets to the point where you know just someone else is running it and then i'd have time but that's a ways off yet too <laughs> yeah and and i always feel like uh, i do this with even my job like when it, even if even if that person was available, how are you able to let go and say, "Here, here you go. I'm going to go. I'm not going to work today." <laughs> ah, I know it, it. It will be a challenge. Yeah, we have an event coming up next weekend, and so someone's going to fill in for us a little bit because usually it's just the two of us always here in the in the shop. But okay. a friend of mine is going to fill in a little bit and uh, for a couple hours while we head off off to another event. So, but yeah, I know what you mean. I'm like, oh. I'll be worried the whole time. Not that <laughs> you're going to burn the place down or anything, yeah. but you, you just worry because it's your baby. It's your baby. Yeah. And oh, I yeah. know every, you know, you know, every last nuance of every little thing in the, in here and somebody else doesn't. So you're like, Hey, if somebody asks you, just play dumb. It's yeah. It's a, it's a little easier to, to say, Hey, I'm, I'm, I don't know exactly, but what's your name? What's your question? And I'll, uh, I'll have, make sure the owner gets back to you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're just a phone call away. So yeah, so uh, you mentioned like the art that you like to do. Is there is there a um, I see that you know obviously you're a lamp company. Do you have a favorite lamp, or have you ha or is it sold already? Like, is there something that you have you, like this is my favorite one? I'm never selling it, or it's in my house. <laughs> um, well, that's a tough. That's a tough one, you know, because they're like. Um, I talked to someone last week and uh, they're like, they're kind of like your children, you know, how do you yeah. pick a, how do you pick a favorite, whatever? <laughs> um, I, I, no, I would sell just about anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I like the, um, when we bought the business, when we bought the business um, you know, they, they, they did, they did great lamps, beautiful lamps. He was a woodworker. Mm. Um, and so he really enjoyed a lot of different uh, wood aspects of the lamps and that was something that i was like well it, it wasn't my thing it takes a long time i didn't have the patience for it and so we kind of drifted away from some of the same effects that they had um but then i wanted to expand the style mm. of of the of the lamps i wanted to get more creative uh I mean, yeah pipes go together like this and then i'm like wait a minute if you put this many together, we can make it go like this and do everything. <laughs> and I think that's what's one of the things when people walk in and they're like, well, that's really unusual. And I, I sold a lamp yesterday because the lady just kept staring at it going, I can't believe that pipe. How do you do that? I'm like, okay, possible. So I like the, I, I like those shapes. So we have a, you know, we have a couple hearts in our logo mm -hmm. and our tagline is we bring love to light. So one of my favorite lamps is the, uh, or shapes is the heart heart-shaped lamp which again that's one of those where you just think you can't get pipes to form into a shape like that but yeah so that's one of my favorites that was a design that we created from the from the get-go because we wanted to we wanted to expand on the whole heart and love thing yeah there is a lot just looking on your on your instagram like looking at the at the heart pages and uh, or the heart pick lamps um do you are you the one who creates all of these or do you have a, you know, you and your co-owner, like uh, who, who is in charge of saying, Hey, these are the lamps we're making. Um, I pretty much design. I pretty much design the things. We're kind of a brain and brawn uh, team. And as he's walking, him, he's, been, he's sneaking through here. <laughs> my, my, husband, I, my husband, Scott is the brains. I okay. mean, the, is the, is the brawn. Oh, and okay. so I design a lamp and I hand it to him and I say, here, make this light up. <laughs> and uh sometimes I, sometimes i get one of those looks like really where's the wires gonna go oh uh, how do you plug this you know I'm like well i didn't think about any of that stuff that's not my job my job is to make it look cool your job is to figure out how to make it light up so but now i've learned also in the process that there are certain things that that i can't do and that are something i can do and some things i can't do mm. uh, when it comes to how to make shapes but uh so 
you know, basically, and then he's in charge of a lot of the, what we also do is we upcycle a lot of things. Yeah. That's um, cool too. You've seen the gumball. You've probably seen a gumball machine. I was just going to say that there's a claw machine in here that claw looks machine. really, yeah, that looks really yeah. cool. Yeah. And, uh, the, the blenders, <laughs> uh, uh, cameras, musical instruments Yeah, around here again, see what else there is. Um, uh, gumballs, blenders, skateboard, a, f- a football helmet, football, f- football helmet. We did that. Yeah. So I'm not a giant, like, um, I don't know, it's probably politically incorrect to say this, but I'm not a, like a giant tree hugger or anything, but I do believe in trying to recycle things and keep them out of landfills. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a history. I, I've always loved antiques and, uh, and vintage pieces. And so, uh, you know, some of those things you just don't make anymore. We've made, uh, uh, and something that we do is if you have an item that is a family keepsake of sorts, you know, we can, we call it lampify <laughs> their, their grandfather or some ancestor used to be in the sausage making business. So they had these big cast iron pot grinding kind of things that made sausages and they had two of them shoved in the basement. Well, they're not doing any good to anybody sitting in the basement collecting dust. So they brought them up. We lampified them and now they have one in the home and I think they gave one to it to one of the siblings or something um, so that they could have this item in the family room or wherever. And uh, their conversation starters, people come in and they're like, um, is that, what is that lamp over there? Like, well, that's a sausage press that my grandpa had. And so, you know, it tells the story. It, it, it helps tell family histories and, and, and job histories. Uh, we've, we've turned us a, a court stenographers, machine oh yeah the lamp because that's her that's her thing you know um uh we just made a chandelier for a client it was his grandfather's wooden ladder i would never climb it because it was 100 years old yeah but we cut it down to size and put some lights off of it and and he's have it hanging in the family uh lakeside cottage now so that grandpa's kind of always there you know with them and we, we love doing those kinds of things yeah, seeing this football helmet makes me want to bring in. I coach for Perrysburg. It makes me want to bring in a football helmet and have a lamp that I can add to all my sports stuff here. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah that my... lamp, that football uh, football helmet lamp. Yeah, we uh, we uh, did that for a, a raffle. Um, oh, nice. We donated that. They, they supplied us with the helmet, and uh, we've done a baseball. Uh, I guess they're helmets also. Mm-hmm. Um, we did that before, um, but yeah, we, I thought that football helmet uh, turned out pretty fun. My son, my son has a mini Parisburg helmet. Maybe I can get, bring in a mini one, and you can you can make a, yeah. a mini lamp. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't doesn't have to be doesn't have to be that big one, right? Yeah, yeah. These these things are so cool, and it's like I said, art art. Uh, I love I love it, and and you talked about doing commission stuff, and uh, you know I have tattoos, and when I got them, I told I told my artist like, all right, here's the flowers I want, and that was all I told him. Like here's and then he created a design, put it on my arm. And to me, I'm not going to tell someone like this is a, especially an artist. I'm not going to tell them exactly how to do something. That's just me, though. Like if I were to come to you and say, hey, I have this idea for a lamp. I want to incorporate this thing. Then to me, that's the end of our conversation. Unless you have questions for me, you're right. going to you're going to take the thing and make it how you want to make it because you're the artist. I'm not going to tell you how to make your art. I'm just going to tell you, here's the thing I want to make out of it. But I, do you come? Is it hard for you to for if customers come at you and say, I, this is super specific. I need this, or is it easier for you? Um, it, it's generally harder because just because you have a vision of something in your mind, that's just not necessarily logistically how it might work. Yeah, you know, uh, there was someone in here yesterday, and we were talking about some different things, and she's like, "Oh, you could do this, you could do that." I'm like, "That's not possible." In, in your head, maybe in the AI world, we could make that. <laughs> yeah, but it's just not going to work because there has to be space for wires and the socket and uh, all these other things that go into go into building something but you know we'll try our hardest to uh, talk them through uh, something we've i think can only remember one time really where we were able to we got stumped by um someone brought in this uh white leather master's golf bag okay 
And I mean, it was beautiful. I think it cost as much as my car. Um, it was embroidered beautifully, all this green and white leather and everything. And I was afraid to touch the thing because um, our pipes are everything in around here is dirty. And uh, and I'm like, I didn't want to touch this white leather. And she wanted a lamp made out of it and a table base put on and everything. Bags don't sit upright. Yeah. And there was a space for the I didn't want to do anything to it to destroy the integrity of the of the, of the bag, um, and, which she didn't really care about. But it was just a challenge logistically of trying to figure out how to make it work. And we had to, you know, we had to can that one because I just did not work out. But we've, we've tried most of the other thing we've had some success. with. Yeah. Yeah. I always just feel like like if I were to, you know, have my tattoos or get a lamp or have someone paint a picture like I'm paying for your art, not my art <laughs> you know what yeah, i mean I so, there's a lot of details that go into it you know you got to talk about what size size and shape of bulb and wattage and all this and but uh, for the most part there is a lot of artistic um license that i get to take as far as like this if, when, if it does involve pipes of, of how where to go with them all and usually most people are pretty cool um you know we have a really good customer and she came in one time and she brought in her her like her grandma's floor lamp mm-hmm. uh, big base the big marble gold base oh. thing and she really liked the lamp because it was her grandma's whatever and but she's like just bunkify it she said <laughs> <laughs> she said i i just want funky <laughs> things up there and uh so yeah we gave her like three different bulbs and a gauge and everything and kind of steampunked it out and and she lo- and she takes it home and she puts it in her she has a rather e- eclectic home a, Mm-hmm. vintage uh vintage settee and grandma's quilt and everything on the wall but it still all works really works really well which is back to something we were talking about before um you know i try to let people they walk in here and they might want they might want a brass lamp because they've always had a brass lamp on that table mm-hmm. you know um but you should just have what you like um you know the, the rules of Two matching end tables and two matching lamps, two matching lampshades. You can do that if you want to, and that more power to you. That's what you like. That's what you love. That's what you think makes your home beautiful. But also, if you want a football helmet lamp, (laughs) that's what you want. And you should be able, it's your house. You should be able to have whatever you want, wherever you want, and and do it your way. And that's what makes it unique in you, uh, on you, unique just like you, you know? Yeah. So. That, yeah. That's great. That, that's awesome. I, I, I do like that. Cause it is, you know, my house, um, as you can see, my decorating taste behind me is why I'm into all my stuff is in the basement, the basement. So I, <laughs> but <laughs> I have my space and I have my things and, you know, but upstairs it is the, the, you know, it is, here's our couch, here's our end tables, here's our matching thing where we put our TV on that kind of stuff. But we do have little unique stuff here and there. And, you know, some of it's my grandpa's stuff, some of it's some, yep. You know, uh, some some paintings we got from from a student or, you know, something like that. And uh, I I just like all that stuff. And it, one thing we do, too, uh, which I think it's funny, especially when people come over and they don't understand what we're talking about, is we have so many surfaces. And with two kids and us two, things are always getting set down places. So we named our furniture. So uh, if our kid says, hey, where's this thing? You're like, oh, it's on Fred. And then so they know exactly like where <laughs> where they're going to. So we have two identical end tables. So one is named uh, Sue and one is named Fart. And you can guess which one the kid's named. Yeah. <laughs> Just makes life easier, Mitch. I, yeah, I, I, it does. I never I never thought of that. I, 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 I might steal that because, you know, there, there are times I'm trying to think of. We, ha- we have a, um, a council at home and it. I don't really know what it is, and we call it the we call it the red cabinet because that's what it mm-hmm. is. Red cabinet. I yeah. probably should give it a name, and then I could just say, "Well, you know, where are the garbage bags?" And they're in Fred. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it, it, it works wonderfully, and um, to the point where you know we can tell kids that. I mean, our job is <laughs> I keep telling our kids, "Hey, we shouldn't need names of furniture because things should be put away." But they're kids, and things get left out. You know, we leave stuff out too. But I always think it's funny, especially with people are in the house and like we have guests over and our kids ask like, Hey, where's this thing? Oh, it's on a Fred. And they're like, what is a Fred? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> God forbid we say it's on fart. Go get that. I know. <laughs> yeah. 
end of the dinner party, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Too funny. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mitch, where, what is, what is something that we haven't talked about that you want to make sure people are aware of, of Toledo Lamp Company? Oh boy. Or maybe um, we've talked a lot about stuff. Besides, you know, know I, I I will put in websites and I'll put in the Instagram and all that stuff in yeah. in the show notes so people could click on it and check all this stuff out. But something something that that you would you know people would want to hear from you. You know, going back to that whole category of one thing, um, <laughs> we are just so many different things, and um, I, there are other um, there are other businesses in the area that that do some consignment art things and and there are handmade places uh, m- the majority of our stuff is all also local and handmade which you know i think that's important uh, we we do have things from here and there and everywhere um but the local and handmade stuff especially oh and today well no but we're filming or we're recording this on sunday artist sunday the crazy weekend oh. here in the retail world um all right, my phone started to overheat. I think, and that's what I lost. Oh, it. okay. So we'll pick up. You, you're talking about Artist Sunday. Artist Sunday, a day when uh, it's the first, or it's the Sunday after Thanksgiving, uh, the last four years, where you're encouraged to uh, support local artists and buy local art. And so that's a big, that's a big day. And unfortunately, I really dropped the ball again this year because I sh- we have thirty, said almost thirty people here, and I should be, I should be promoting them um, some more so that people come in and they they buy some of these products and some of this art and uh, so i've got to make a make a point next year to maybe do a better job and not wait until sunday morning to go oh guess what i gotta pick up that ball um but we just got so wrapped up with our move here just recently in just two okay. months and like i said and then trying to just like i said trying to think about our sales with uh, the last couple of days of of things happening on so but today's art is sunday and that's really really important day I, I didn't realize I didn't realize that was a thing. I have to make sure to to talk about it next year. I didn't I didn't uh, I probably have seen it because there's Black Friday and and yep. then what what is a like a shop local Saturday or or I don't oh, this exactly. is Saturday yep. yeah 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 you can uh, just search out Artist Sunday and uh, there's like 500 communities uh, right now involved. You look at the map and it's all over and there's different types of events and just promotions. Um, so that's it. It's really a really great thing. And I, said, I should have done more with it. Um, but that's well, another year. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't beat yourself up <clears throat> too much. I mean, you, you have the shop and these people get to be in there and I'm sure they're marketing too. So you got, you got a lot of stuff going on, Mitch. And, uh, yeah. uh, but I, I, so I, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to come on the podcast. Um, it, it was great talking to you. I'm very interested in your store. I, I, I'll have to make it out there and check it out because it is, I, I like, you know, I like farmer's markets and that's what the kind of like it reminds me of is like, here's, here's a farmer's market in a shop because here's all these different things and stuff. Yeah. With, with art inside of the, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I do hope, I hope you stop out sometime. Yep. Yeah, I will. And thanks again, Mitch. Uh, again, I will have all the, I'll have your website and in, in Instagram account and stuff in the show notes. People can click right on it. Check you out. Uh, have a good day. Thanks again for coming on the podcast. Thank you much. Thanks again to my guest, Mitch Anteski, for coming on the podcast, co-owner of the Toledo Lamp Company. Uh, it was great to hear all about, obviously, the Toledo Lamp Company. Not they just don't do lamps, really cool lamps, by the way. Uh, but they, you know, it's a, they have uh, consignment with other artists, so you need to check out, especially coming up around Christmas. Coming up on Christmas, check out their shop for any ideas, uh, gift ideas. Um, for uh, for your loved ones, or maybe you're not loved ones. Just check it all out for anybody that might want something. Also, share this podcast for anyone who might want to listen to to podcasts and say, hey, I'm fresh out. What do you got? And you know what I got? I got the Nerdball podcast. Um, so share it. You know, you guys you guys do a great job liking, reviewing, su- subscribing. So keep doing that. This uh, podcast is fun, and, you know, it's only made more fun when there's more people involved. So keep, keep doing that. Go to the YouTube page. Search the Nerdball Podcast. Subscribe to that. That would be great if we can get up to 150 subscribers by the end of the year. Um, what else do I have? I don't think I really have anything else. Um, again, check out the show notes for the Instagram and the website for Toledo Lamp Company. They were uh, Mitch was great. Uh, I need to check out their store um, too to see what they have to offer there because it, it seems really cool. You know, 
take some pictures, see what else is there. I can show people. So uh, again, check that out. Click on those links to see what they got to offer. As always, thanks to Real JP Multimedia, Cuttlefish Graphics, Perrysburg Junior High STEM Lab, and Big Daddy Graphics for always helping out the podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.